Welcome to Worship with Church at Home. We want to take time to welcome you this morning. As we, together as God's people, wherever this week finds us, take time to worship him. May you know and feel and be aware of God's presence this day. And may you learn with all of us together that Jesus is our rescuer. And we praise God for just that. May the service be a blessing to you. And we look forward to all that God will teach us this day. Ghost, they said, cried out in fear. 
But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and he beginning, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is God's word for us this morning. The message for today uh, follows the theme of this past week's Kids Morning Out program, that Jesus is our rescuer. So in the scripture reading we just heard from Matthew's Gospel, we see Jesus be being the rescuer for Peter. As Peter began to drown in the stormy waves of the sea, Jesus reached down and rescued him, bringing him back to safety in the boat. Now, the Bible story, this Bible story raises a number of questions. One of them could be, why would Peter even step out of a boat in the first place? I remember being at a teacher's meeting once, and the, the head of our school was trying to persuade me and other teachers to go skydiving, the tandem, tandem skydiving, you know, where you like the bucket list, the movie bucket list, you strap onto a real skydiver, and you jump out of an airplane. He was trying to convince all us teachers. We did have health insurance, but he was trying to convince us that we should go skydiving. And then another administrator was visiting our school that day, and after he gave his invitation, the administrator said, um, you know, I'm sitting here wondering, why would I jump out of a perfectly good plane? <laughs> Two different points of view on skydiving. We could ask a similar question about Peter. Why would he step out of a perfectly good boat, especially in stormy waters? Another question could be, why didn't Jesus just tell his disciples to wait by the shore? He said, I'm going up to pray. I just need some time. It's been a busy day. Just wait by the shore. And then I'll come and get in the boat. No, he says, no, you, you take off. Go out into the water. Then Jesus wouldn't have had to walk on the water. They just waited. Maybe Jesus was showing off. Or he was taking too big of a risk. Like this next guy at a festival in Spain, trying to get a bull to run into water. Now, in this picture, you see the bull, the, the whole, in this festival in Spain, the whole object is to get the bulls to run into water, chase you into the water. So you see that he is actually sort of on top of the water. So only three men in history, it says, have walked on water, Jesus, Peter, and Anselmo. But only Anselmo has the picture. <laughs> so, uh, interesting enough, while it is true that only Anselmo has the picture, unlike Jesus and Peter, it doesn't look like he's going to be walking on water for very long. <laughs> so this story of Jesus and Peter walking on water does raise a few questions. But the question for us to consider today is who will rescue our children? Who will rescue our children as we connect this morning's service to uh, Jesus is our rescuer, the kids morning out? Who will rescue our, our children? Obviously, the Sunday school answer is Jesus, right? Jesus is the Savior sent from heaven. God the Father gave him to us to save us from a life apart from God, to save us from living a life that, where we do not know God, to save us from a harmful life of living in sin, of living in disobedience to God. But when we also know that we also know that the scripture tells us that those of us who follow Jesus are the body of Jesus Christ. We are the hands and heart of Jesus, the eyes and ears of Jesus, the feet and the face of Jesus to children. Yes, Jesus is the one who will rescue our children. However, Jesus wants us to be involved. 
whether we're parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or just love kids and have kids in our life. Jesus wants us to be involved in rescuing our children. So what can we learn from this story of Jesus rescuing Peter in order to help rescue the children around us? Back in April, UNICEF reported that 114 children, unaccompanied by any adults, were rescued in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Libya. These are a couple of photos that UNICEF posted on their site. Their families from Africa had sent them on a boat by themselves, hoping they would have a better life in Europe. They were hoping the governments of Italy or Greece or some other EU country would rescue their children and give them a better life. These children and families are fleeing from um, countries of violence, poverty, hungry, hunger. They are desperate for a new start in life, for someone to rescue their children. And as we think about how we can bring children to Jesus, how do we bring Jesus, uh, children to Jesus the rescuer? I want to invite you to change your image of the story of Jesus and the disciples in the boat, just for a minute. Let's start with the boat. Instead of the 12 apostles, let's imagine our children are in that boat. Now, thankfully, most of our children are not facing with these children and these families, the desperation that they face. Although we do have, and you know, there is poverty, there is, there is hunger, there are families struggling all around us. Still, when you picture your child in that boat, or the child that you love in that boat, with the wind howling and the storms raging, instead of those apostles, put your children in that boat. What kinds of waves are crashing against our children these days? I want to suggest there are at least four waves that are crashing against children. <clears throat> the wave of anxiety. According to the website anxietycanada.com, about 20% of children and adolescents struggle with excessive anxiety throughout their life. And whether it is being put in a situation they haven't been in before, or facing a task they aren't confident in, or attending a new school or group activity, the wave of anxiety is a constant companion in their life. There's the wave of identity. Canada is a diverse country with diverse cultures and identities. We should want to celebrate these ethnic and cultural identities and learn from each other. But racism in families and is still expressed in homes. And this can carry over into schools and sports. Then there is the, the many uh, questions surrounding sexual identity that our children are facing, both in, in school and with their friends whether they're in primary, or sorry, even from the time they're in primary. Then there is the wave of morality. What is the right, what is wrong? Who determines right and wrong? My parents, my friends, what I see in videos, what I see in social media, my teachers, my coaches? Is there even an absolute right or an absolute wrong? A fourth wave that rolls over our youth is the wave of spirituality. In schools and in other social settings, children are introduced to indigenous spirituality and to East, uh, in Asian uh, spirituality through yoga and mindfulness. Then maybe at home they are taught Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist spirituality. And it is good, don't get me wrong, it's good to live in this diverse country. We need to learn from one another, to understand, because racism, fear, comes from ignorance. It comes from not knowing. Someone. It comes from not understanding other people's point of view. And yet, we're still here as a Christian church in Peru, a place where the gospel about Jesus Christ has been taught to many, many generations of children. So many of you know your children, your grown children, your adult children, who were in those pictures years ago, right? Um, and so we as a Christian church here in Peru, where we believe that Jesus is the rescuer, that unique rescuer sent from God. How do we live and how do we rescue our children in the midst of all this diversity? And again, understand, I'm not saying diversity is bad, I'm just saying how do we live out our Christian faith in the midst of all these various waves that are crashing against us and against our children?
parents and grandparents, friends and relatives, as you think about sending your children back to school, as you think about them in their boat, trying to stay above the many social and spiritual waves rolling around them, do you see Jesus stretching his hand out to them to rescue them? Do our children see the Spirit of God in you and me, encouraging them to step out of the boat, to take the hand of Jesus, and to learn to walk in ways they never thought they could, to do things they never could imagine they could do by faith in Jesus. As I said earlier, if we want to see our children rescued by Jesus, we must show them that he is our rescuer as well. So how do we do this? To lead our children to Jesus the Rescuer, there are two questions we're going to ask ourselves. The first question is, do our children know we pray? In verse 23 of our scripture lesson, we are told that after Jesus had dismissed them, or dismissed the people, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Do our children know we pray? Jesus prayed. Before this, Jesus had spent most of the day with over 5,000 people, extremely busy, teaching and healing, and then even feeding them. And yet, at the end of that day, he needed time to be quiet, to be with God, and to pray to his Father. Most children know their parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, work and keep busy all day. So most of our children see us do the stuff that Jesus was doing earlier that day, just doing stuff, busy, working, finding things to do. Do our children know we pray? Do the children around us know we pray? When I say prayer, obviously I mean more than simply repeating prayers around a meal or at bedtime, and those are wonderful because that's the teaching, isn't it? That's where we start. Everybody has to start somewhere. But do our children know that we regularly talk to God and listen to God and depend on Him like a mother or a father or a friend? There's no coincidence that Jesus walks on water after He prays. After He spent time alone with the Father, He knew the Spirit of God was with Him to perform this miracle. After Peter started to fall into the water and Jesus rescued him, He said, Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? It was prayer that empowered Jesus to have the faith to say, my Father will has empowered me through the Spirit to walk on these waves. The apostles knew that Jesus regularly went away from people to be quiet and pray and listen to the Heavenly Father's instructions. And so we simply ask ourselves, do we imitate Jesus in, this, in the same way? Do our children see us imitating Jesus? There was a father who had a teenage son and this son was going through some heavy waves and getting battered around by self-doubts and low self-esteem. Pretty typical adolescent stuff in high school. And even though he had all kinds of gifts and abilities, he still just struggled so much. The father was just kind of like trying to figure out a way. How do I, how do I respond when you have one child who likes to talk and another child who doesn't like to talk? How do you respond? Um, so the father just said, what can I do? I can pray. And so at night, after the end of the day, the son would be in bed and would lay down. And the father would just sit there and pray. Pray positive words to God over the son. And just thank God for it his son, and to pray night after night whenever it was needed. Jesus is our rescuer. And Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. When our children are in that boat being tossed around and not sure who to hold on to, we can help them find an anchor in the hands and arms of Jesus. When our children know that we depend on Jesus as our rescuer in prayer, when we teach them to depend on Jesus in prayer, we help them get out of the boat to learn to walk on their own by faith in Jesus. 
and learn to ride the winds and waves together with him. The second question, do our children know we walk by faith? When Peter saw Jesus coming towards the boat and walking on the water, he cried out saying, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. This was an amazing example of Peter's walking by faith. He was a fisherman. Fisherman. I, I've known a few fishermen growing up in PEI. They don't walk out of a boat. Right? You guys know fishermen. They don't, like, they don't walk out of a boat. He was smart. That's how he made his living. He, especially in the middle of waves. And yet Peter had faith in Jesus. Just like Jesus had spent time with Heavenly Father and learned to trust, Peter spent lots of time with Jesus and knew he could trust him to walk on water as well. Peter took this step of faith. What about us? Do the children around us see us walking by faith? Do they see us taking risks when we cannot be sure of the future that's in front of us? Do they see us trusting in an unseeable God? Even though what's in front of us doesn't look very uh, promising. Do we show children and talk to children about what it means to walk by faith in Jesus, who we don't see, instead of only trusting in what we do see? What made Peter be willing to walk by faith and go to Jesus on the water? When the apostles first saw Jesus, they thought he was a ghost. But look at these words, these words of Jesus to his friends. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Three statements that give us three important ways that we can um, lead our children and show our children that Jesus is the rest. When we think of take courage, Jesus shares his power with his followers. He tells us to take courage, to be strong, to believe in his power. That is able to work wonders in us. That we don't have to rest on our own strength. Because sometimes we come to the end of our rope. And then we find Jesus is hanging on to the other, other end of it. Jesus shares his power. It is I, Jesus says. He shares his presence. He assures us that he's the only true God. He is with us. He will stay with us throughout every, every storm ahead of us. He promises to be with us as his children and to rescue us and our children. <clears throat> Jesus is like a lifeguard who follows the 1020 rule. And the rule states this. A lifeguard who spots someone in trouble needs to respond in 10 seconds and reach the person in 20 seconds. Good news, Jesus is even quicker because he stays with us. He's right there. He shares his presence with us. Don't be afraid. Jesus shares his peace with his followers. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to let anxiety rule over us. We can find ways of coping. We, we learn skills just like any other life skill. We learn coping skills. And we can learn them through faith in Jesus. When we know that our anxiety is part of our life and that the peace of Jesus is greater than our anxiety. Jesus can help us turn our fear into peace as we gain more confidence to walk by faith every day. Because Jesus is our rescuer. Back in 1984, the singer-songwriter Randy Stonehill was asked to write a theme song for the Christian organization Compassion International and their work to help children and families all around the world. And I just close this message with these lyrics. And actually, I just invite us, if you can, let's just read them together. I know not all of you will be able to, but if we can, let's just read these words together as we um, close out this message. But we are his hands. We are his voice. We are the ones who must make the choice. And if it isn't now, tell me when. If it isn't you, then tell me who will save the children. Let's pray. 
Blessed Jesus, thank you. Because you always receive little children. Help us to have the faith of children that come to you. Knowing that you are our rock, our strength, our salvation, our rescuer at every moment.